thank you to the few people who subscribe to this channel. This is just a fan page. Please contemplate supporting King Features and the Fleister Studios and the official Betty Boop page. Copyright Disclaimer Under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 load since is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing non-profit, educational or personal. Use tips the bolifants in favor. Fair use is an inspiration to many. Her 1932 cartoon Betty Boop in Snow White inspired Walt Disney to create the 1937 feature film Snow White. When the film was released it was a hit and it saved Disney from bankruptcy. Grim Natwick who created Betty Boop in 1930 was asked to develop Snow White. Use Betty Boop as the initial source to create Snow White. The original Snow White was going to be drawn in a 1930 style similar to that of Betty. This was later dropped, and Disney went for the more traditional, animation style. As you can see in this concept here by Grim Natwick, Snow White has red hair. Betty Boop was also known to officially in color to alternatively have had red hair. His cartoonist Elsa Mutezuka was inspired by Snow White and Betty Boop to create the Princess Knight. You can see Betty Boop and Snow White in Princess Sapphire's design. In 1983, Adriana Casalotti who was blacklisted by Walt Disney Studios told newspapers that the speaking voice for Snow White that she had used was an imitation of Betty Boop. Meaning Disney Snow White is an indirect parody of Betty Boop. Snow White is 14 years old, and so is Betty. I get to Betty's problematic behavior and age later. Over the years Betty has influenced a lot of parody characters. Though Betty herself is not an original creation and was inspired by Floppers, Clara Bow, and Boop Boop at Duke Girl. <laughs> The studios would use the women who voiced Betty to do the modeling and sometimes put a bit their personality into Betty's creation. By 1939, Betty was retired. The studio attempted to create a successor by the name of Sally Swing. Tetsuvere's Red for Metro Goldwyn Mayer later took over where Betty left off. Red was a small petty character who often did imitations of Katharine Hepburn and Mae West and in her child from Spock. Using a New Yorker sounding babby voice, Metro Goldwyn Mayer had decided to coin Lena Horne's singing style for it. Imitations are something that Betty would do in her early cartoons, as based on her original voice actress May Cristel, a known impersonator who is known for imitations. Reed has that of a black woman's singing voice, and her singing style was based on jazz singer Lena Horne. Horn was known to be a person of color and was biracial, but could often pass for white. Horn stated that she was a kind of black that white people could accept. Red's singing voices were provided by Mojin Lin and Kenny Russell, who were both successful singers on their own right. Disney would later create a one-shot parody of 1920s flapper culture of the Boopa Doop and named their character Betty Boopy Doop. A poo -poo -pee -doo, a poo -poo -pee -doo, doo. When Disney got the rights to adapt to frame Roger Rabbit into a movie, they were thinking of Reed. They created a character by the name of Jessica Rabbit. Jessica was pretty much based on Reed. However, Jessica was tall in size to the pet I'd read, and she also was in a relationship with a furry by the name of Roger Rabbit. Betty and Bimbo were in a relationship, but Betty had started out as a dog herself. So when Betty turned to a human girl and Bimbo didn't, they were still in a relationship up until Bimbo was removed from the series. Jessica's body is built more like a man compared to Betty and Red, and she could pass for a man. However, in some scenes Jessica looks more female than male. In some scenes she looks really big and scary. 
and others in season due to the native more feminine. Here is a comparison photograph of Jessica Rabbit and the drag queen. She is an exaggerated caricature for what some would call the ultimate male fantasy. Jessica wears the trappings of femininity like a costume in essence. She's a drag queen. She rebels by using her appeal to get what she wants from men and then ditching them for her true love Roger Rabbit. There are actually real people out there that created this fantasy. For example, Angeline the Billboard Queen, however, she's the Barbie equivalent of Jessica Rabbit. Jessica was originally intended to have been an evil character. Another character inspired by Tetevere was Hollywood, a pun on the word Hollywood. She appeared in the 1992 film Cool World. Hollywood filled in that role that Jessica would have originally played, that of the villain. Her creation was inspired by Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Tekaviri's Red Hot Riding Hood and Kim Basinger, and a hint of Marilyn Monroe. The ending sequence makes Holly very unlikable. Speaking of blondes for Red's appearance in Swing Shift Cinderella, they were thinking of giving her blonde hair for the role of Cinderella. In the original concepts, for Cool World Holly was called Dubai Dallas, and she had red hair. They wanted to cast Drew Barrymore the role, but Drew was underage, she was only 17 at the time, and they felt that she wouldn't wouldn't be a box office Drew. Lanet was more like the Betty Boop in Cool World. She was the counterpart to Holly, and was more sympathetic and likable. Nails, he's alive! <coughs> oh, and he's gorgeous too! <laughs> We later found herself emulating both Betty Boop and Jessica Rabbit when she was revived during the 90s and then started speaking like Betty Boop. However, this babby voice reused could have been a reference to her childlike incarnation. Boom boom ba boom, spying's my game. Now Betty Boop parodies are Lou, Tip Bronstein, and Googie Goop. Lou was one of the first parodies of Betty to be known that had directly ripped off the character. Lulu, más, más, más grande que... Googie was a character that was a direct parody of Betty Boop. Initially, she was going to be a human girl like Betty. Winner didn't want to license Betty Boop for the cartoon because they did not want to pay the fees, so they created a parody. It is a vulgar parody of Betty Boop. Her design seems to be based on the Betty Boop episode Sally Swing, and the pillow to look more like Betty Boop. But instead of wearing a strapless dress, it wore a flapper dress with slanted straps. Betty in Dizzy Dishes was said to be that of an ugly doe. Toot, however, is depicted as an ugly cow-like monster. In the Latin American version, Toot is called Lilith Cart. She is named Lulu after the Mexican parody of Betty Boop. In the first season, Toot, a character from the 1920s, realizes that she's no longer a sex symbol in the eyes of the more updated cartoon characters and decides to be the mean girl instead. This would later change and Toot would be made to be more dumber, and she would often be made fun of for being overweight. The creators of the show really wanted to show how hideous Toot was. In one episode, Toot receives a legal notice from King Features or the Fleischer Studios. She throws it into the shredder. Parody is protected by the First Amendment as a form of expression. However, since parodies really heavily on the original work, parodists really on the fair use exception to combat claims of copyright infringement. Lily's the Mouse Girl was a one-shot character that was based on Betty Boop. She has some of the characteristics of Betty, excluding the the book at dupes, and she has red hair. Request L, Betty's long-tongue voice was even asked to voice her. The madam has the cutest. Since then, there have been dozens of parodies of Betty Boop in the video game that is now an animated series cafe. Carla Maria held a burger inspired by Betty Boop. Carla Maria was also inspired by Ariel the Little Mermaid. Lisa Frank, who I clearly admire. She's a comic and she reminds me of myself. Well, she was inspired by Betty Boop to create her own characters. These characters were vibrant 
and gave off major girl power. A lot of people believe that Lisa Frank is a racist. Personally, I do not believe she's. That is just speculation and clearly defamation. She has not once said anything racist. She also is a huge Michael Jackson fan. Would a racist be a fan of someone black? I think not. When Day Carter Brand, who created the Bratz doll line, he used Lisa Frank's ideas and concepts to create a new doll line for metal. Somehow, entertainment ended up with the dolls and concept, and they had a hit. Battle would later sue them for the rights. Battle would launch the Dove Stars. This on the end of the names. Will tell tell you that Battle and Mill were pretty much at war. What's up? I'm Nikki, sports fan to the max. Hey girl, I'm Tia, hip cool chick and a techno whiz. I'm Summer, I'm like totally into nature. <laughs> I'm Alexa, your personal expert on style. In between, we created the Moxie Girls. This had more to do with the lawsuit. Eventually, the brats were discontinued. However, gay fashion designed Hayden Williams acknowledged that he poop like drawing her several times. Williams is known for creating outfits for the Bratz dolls. After the Bratz died up, they had a brand new idea called a whole surprise. Dolls? Both the Bratz? All dolls? Have had controversy like Betty Boop of being over-sexualized. Coincidentally, all of these creations of dolls and concepts seem to link back to Betty Boop. Betty Boop is the source. Two months ago on Reddit, user by the name of Anakere posted a comparison. Another user by the name of Zendansky said that she wouldn't be surprised if Betty Boop was the inspiration. Betty was the inspiration. She was the inspiration of the inspiration. So they coined Lisa Frank's ideas. However, Lisa Frank's ideas linked back to Betty Boop. We are all inspired by one another. Either we are imitating someone's style, the way they sound, the way they look, how they move, and the list goes on. The sad thing about Betty is that she is often sexualized by perverts. The perverts cannot see past her sexualization. They don't care about how she sings or presents herself, or how she helped empower women who had little to no rights. There's nothing wrong with Betty having a sex symbol status, but Betty being 13 in some cartoons is quite controversial, and that should not be role model material for kids because it will work their brain into thinking that that is okay when it is not. But if it is aimed at an older demographic, then it is fine. Though Betty is the queen of cartoons, it does not hide the fact that Betty herself was groomed and that male characters lost over it in her series, like some object. And worst of all, Betty is underage in a majority of those episodes. I would understand if Betty was over the age of 17, but she's not in some of those cartoons. This is exactly why people on social media at one point tried to cancel Betty Boop. But it seems that they did not succeed. Why did they not succeed? Well, for when Betty Boop is not a real person. The women who voiced Betty were women. Also, Betty is ageless. She is a woman in some media. She is only officially 16 for the younger demographic other than that Betty's the Playboy Bunny nurse, teacher backer, mermaid, Sailor, and Mori. Though the Betty Boop cartoons were made for children, they were also for adults too. The kids never understood the adult jokes or innuendos in the series. I had asked someone who lived during that raid the 1930s, and I asked him about Betty Boop. He had not one bad word to say about her. He told me that Popeye and Betty Boop were their generation. Sadly, this person that told me this is now deceased. Today Betty Boop is more of a feminist. But because of the controversy concerning Betty, a lot of animated reboots were canned. But she still appears at them parks and the odd commercial. A, lo a lot of people have been asking me for years now if Betty Boop is a lesbian. As far as I am aware, she was always straight. That is up to King Features and the Fleischer Stodies. What they do with Betty is up to them. However, when people pair up Jessica Rabbit and Betty Boop as a couple, it is quite off-putting. In my mind, it's like they would never be a couple, only in the mind of perverts. At times, Betty is the Boop Boop a Doop Kid, so it's not a good to pair them for fan lore. I often assume the people who do that are deviants. I understand 
That Jessica can pass for a man. But no means no. The problem with Betty's character today is that the people working on her development never took a chance and keep her the same. There is no change to her character. For example, the same designs, same voice actors, which means no new talent. It's been over 10 years, and Betty still has the same voice. They feel that it would be a gem to start looking for new talent. There seems to be no development or change. The kids want someone the role of Betty, not someone old, who they can relate to. This part here will be about some old random drama with Sandy Fox. Here is what happened. There was a video that surfaced 2017 where Sandy was asked about how black girls liked Betty Boop. She agreed, but also seemed to be offended. I had known Sandy had been Petty Prier. Shade became more Petty Poop than Betty Boop. In the deleted video, the look on her face was upset. And her quick response was that Everyone likes Betty Boop. She then went on to list all the countries and or nationalities that liked Betty Boop other than black people. RS and I got to... <laughs> Believe it or not, um, I know this is probably not going to mean much to you, but there's a lot of black girls that are going to be wearing... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's, it's a huge it's, thing. It's a huge thing. Oh, it's a I huge know. huge thing with no, us. No, internationally, though. Yeah, internationally. I mean, in, in so, yeah. France and in Brazil and, yeah. I mean, around the world, Betty mm -hmm. Boop. I mean, she is the queen of cartoons. Yeah, she is. And right. she's the first ever talking cartoon. So. Oh, yeah, she is, she is. And, you know, that was, you know, the Fleischer brother. I mean, that was a big yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess <laughs> So, going for that, uh, going for Betty Boop, <laughs> yeah. I just had to... Uh, and I felt that it was a dig at me for some reason. I feel that Sandy knew that I had a streak for defending my kinfolk. And she knew what she was exactly doing in that video. But maybe it was my fault for trying to keep up her. I just wanted to see what she had to say. And I didn't expect that. She somehow knew I would come across the video and also knew that I would be offended. A lot of people who saw the original video were dumber than a brick and they didn't seem to understand what she meant by that. But I did. It was brought to the attention by me. But the people who interviewed Sandy realized that I was pointing it out and also pointed out the look on her face, which was that of disgust. Though the video and the look on Sandy's face is gone, I have the audio. At the time, I was so shocked. I did not say Fady. I actually embedded the video on my website. But it seems the p and so they deleted the video that garnered them great views. And they snipped out the part where she said that to predict her. It seems that Sandy was really offended by the statement. And the people who interviewed her covered up her indirect racism. These people were black who did that. So there is no clues or white knights involved. Of course, after that had taken place and I made it known the racists did run rampant with it. But it did not last, because I did not care too much. It turns out that Sandy Fox was a huge Helen Kane supporter at the time, and she got offended that people on social media were embracing Betty Boop as a black girl or woman and she showed it in the video that was deleted. You could see her facial expression, and it was like why did that upset her. Sandy is not new to black people. She has been around a lot of black people. A lot of black people look up to her. She used to open for Kid Calloway when she did Helen Kane imitation. So, if there was no problem, why delete the video? Personally, I have no problem with Sandy voicing Betty Book today. I had thought that Sandy Fox was being racist directly to me for information that she had put out. Why else would you do that? I recently found out that it wasn't actually Sandy Fox. It was her husband Lek Lang who actually runs her channel. He had noticed that I had a problem with a racist Italian. And he himself is seriously I cannot tell who is the man and who is the woman in their relationship. Well, because she is his wife, it looks like she went along with it. They are known to be a double team. You will always see them together. They are a childless couple who thrive on one another. Because Sandy is allegedly infertile and is unable to have children, they put a lot into their representation. So, you say anything that offends them, they will double team. The Fleischer Studios and King Features Syndicate allow this kind of behavior. 
It made me think at the time that Betty Boop was voiced by a racist. But maybe Sandy wasn't being racist, but her being part of a racist Helen Kang group on Facebook. And these little jabs at me for using her sources and directing this all at me made me assume that she was racist. And I still do think that Sandy and her husband Lex do not like black people. One of the main sources was that she had voiced Betty Boop in 1981. The source came directly from her page. I recycled that information and they used it to attack me. What gave them the right to lash out at me? Over what? Who do these Hollywoodos think they are? Gods? Well, not to me. I do not idolize to that extent. I like, but not to the point of worship. And I certainly do not hang around or near people who are hateful. Sandy's page responded to me in a video by saying for your information, indicating that she was saying that. I didn't know what I was talking about when it came to Betty Boop. When in reality the source came directly from her official page. Why snap at me? What did I do? It's bad by Esther Jones, right? You mad because of that, right? It also seemed to me that Sandy was angry because I had recycled media. That said that Mequesta was a better performer than she was. Was they or I lying? You cannot beat the original Betty. That was Mequesta. She was the original Betty. You are the understudy. Then Sandy kept disrespecting me, Crystal, in interviews. And everyone was asking why is Sandy discrediting me, Crystal? What is her problem with me, Crystal? What? What you mean, me, Crystal? Why does Sandy keep calling out Helen Kane? Helen Kane did not voice Betty Boop in the series. And originally hated Betty Boop. Of course, later in her years, Kane had to use Betty Boop to gain recognition because nobody outside Hollywood knew who Helen Kane was. Helen Kane could not secure gigs during her 1950s comeback, and only ever got work in Hollywood. Sandy Fox was never that bad of a performer. She's really squeaky and it does hurt the ear. Lex Lang is a very sassy man. Who'd have guessed that he was the real bitter one out of the two? Seems to me like she married a queen. So, turns out that she started portraying Betty from 1991, and just because I said she was an impersonator, she got triggered. But wasn't that how she got the role? I dragged Sandy and her husband from their hair to her toes. And that was the end of that chapter. It really hurt me too because I like Sandy a lot. Because I wasn't actually dragging Sandy Prier. I was originally dragging another Betty Boop impersonator for being racist. And I have no idea how Sandy Fox and her husband jumped into the mix. Maybe they thought I was talking about them. But I was not. I was actually talking about Kinker Polly, an ex-Universal Studios impersonator for lying on me over a baby Esther Jones story. There was this big group on Facebook. And there were some Helen Hen impersonators and Betty Boop impersonators. A troll told me that Sandy was helping them, and that group was spreading all kinds of lies about me. Keep in mind that I do not know these people. So to spread lies about me or things that are untrue only really fools the fire. Those people were glowing, mocking me and calling me racial slurs. And so I dragged them all and spoke out against them. I was like not today satin, and they were claiming that Sandy was with them were taking part. So I assumed she was behind the scenes. They did all of that just because I wanted to share the truth. I wanted to acknowledge African Americans and their origins of the scat singing and how it linked to Betty Boop and Helen Kane. It really upset that group. But not everyone in that group was rooting in that manner, so to blame every would be wrong, because I just learned, recently it was only the odd few people that took part in that. Also, it detracted racist people on social media, then decided to jump in. But by that time, that had since died out. Sandy Fuck and her husband later made formal complaints against me. They claimed I was trying to sabotage Sandy by being based. Based over what? They are so lucky for that white privilege. It really does exist. Also, if you are a person of color, like myself, it really will affect you if you go up against people like that. Also, if you try to speak out against anyone who is worshipped, liked, or idolized on social media, you will not win. You will be silenced. 
People look up to dress. I was not being beast like they claimed. I was telling the truth that there were more people who had contracts to voice Betty Boop. And it must have enraged Lex Sandy. And if it was not them, maybe some other stalking deranged psychopath. Speaking of stalkers, there are a lot of them out there. There was a historian at one point who wrote a book on Helen Kane and May Crystal. And out of the blue he tried to stalk me using troll accounts using my sources. As if I gave a rat's ass. Why have these individuals decide your sources? They did it, they ran on the internet. So it must be true. <laughs> really? I am a well published independent research scholar with an academic press in New York. And I have a solid reputation of almost two decades in classrooms and academia for not regurgitating of substantiated material. And the subject is no different. He was just mad because the truth came out, and it did not sync with what he had wrote in his books. He thought he was doing Betty Book justice. But the Fleischers did not like that narrative. So who is he doing justice? Back to Sandy, so... Is that really based? To acknowledge other people who voice the same character? King Features always hires more than one actor or actress. Why does telling the truth hurt people? She's not the only voice of Betty Boop. It is not my fault that May Crystal got a better review as Betty Boop. I did not write those reviews. Just recycled them for the archives. People are too sensitive today. You are unable to push a fact or truth without upsetting someone. I'll warn people. Be careful who you look up to may not be what they seem. And just because I promote a fandom, does not mean I have complete control over the views of other people. Everyone has their own mindset. If random people, pros, are acting wacky on social media, I have nothing to do with those ones. So do not associate me with the crazies. I am not there with them or watching them. They do not exist to me. If black people want a black Betty Boop, they are free to have a black Betty. Betty is fictional and can be any race. She does not exist. Keep in mind that Betty debuted as a Jewish white woman. Also please, do not mix my personal views with Betty Boop, they are separate. Any who does mix the two needs to keep a distance. People are free to personal spaces outside fandom. Betty Boop's birthday is on the August 9, 1930, however, 1933. Max Pleister stated that Betty Boop's real birthday is on the 1st of April. He did not give a birth date to go with his statement. It is presumed that Betty would have been born somewhere during the 1910s. Betty is said to be Max's daughter, at times, and sometimes is referred to as his niece. At and that of the two place she calls him Uncle Max. Speaking of personal blogging, Betty has also inspired me to create. Initially, I started off with Betty Boop Fandom. The one thing I tried to create was Betty Boop related. Boop Boop Be Doo. Can you make it out alive, darling? Wonderful! <laughs> oh, my dear. I'm trapped in a world of words. Whatever shall I do? Oh, gee. I would have never learned how visual novels. Visual novels are illustrated stories. If you are on a budget, you can use the rent visual novel to create a story. And that is just what I did. Originally, I delved in a lot of Betty Boop fandom, but I later came to realization that Betty herself and some of her traits are very unappealing to me. So I decided to create my own original characters instead. I will share some of my creations in this video. Originally, I wanted to animate and do animation. I like it all flash a lot. But later I figured I was terrible at it. The first time I animated, a singer who had previously recorded a song for Zoe 101 and a Barbie film hit me up and said she would do the sound test for the lip sync. The recording was a jazz song called Button Up Your Overcoat and it went a little something like this. Button up your overcoat when the wind is free. Take a carry yourself, you belong to me. Eat an apple every day, get to bed by three. Take a carry yourself, you belong to me. Be careful crossing streets, ooh ooh, cut out sweets, ooh ooh, lay off meat, ooh ooh, you get a pain and ruin your tum tum. 
Break it down the lumber well when you climb a tree. Take good care of yourself. You belong to me. Richard Alcott was a major inspiration to me, and so was Nintendo. I no longer play video games or have anything to do with gaming. That was ten years ago. As years go by, people change. The first characters I created were a do called Gengar and Lemon. It is a reference to the drink. Jenga was a bunny girl and Lemon was a pendant girl. Lemon's original name was Pendant Lemon. At the time, I had called Gengar Gengar because the singer had that name, and it was a tribute to her at that time. Gengar and Lemon appeared in my first visual novel called Turn Between. I I was thinking of Betty Boop, but at the same time not. Because I had my own ideas and how I wanted my characters to come across. Also, like Betty Boop, my characters were always of legal age. One day a shining knight will sweep me off my feet. Lemon, don't push your luck. You know what your problem is, Ginger? Yeah, what? You lack? Oh my, he looks so handsome. Hi. You're really cute. I'm Lemon Lee, pleased to make your acquaintance. Step aside. You really think you have a chance? Ginger, what makes you think you are so special? You think you can have anything you want. Well, you can't. Not this time. I'd watch that mouth of yours. Besides, I saw him first. I don't have to do anything for you. You don't own me. Seems you have forgotten everything I have done for you. Who helped you with your career? Who was there for you when you lost your home? I made you. And I can break you. Look what you have done! Me? Yes, Lamon, you! Who else could be so stupid? You have ruined my one and only chance at love! Well, not this time. I will pursue him. He will be mine. I just know that we would make a great couple. You can't have him. Not this time. I won't let you. You don't even know him, you gutter snipe. How dare you? I could always get to know him. All right, then let's make a deal. Whoever can, how dare I say it, win the heart of that handsome man, wins our little spat. You have a deal. Your heart is as black as stone. You have no chance. I won't lose to the likes of you. Pitiful. Just pitiful. You don't stand a chance against me. We'll see about that. You wait and see. I created a little girl called Pen. Her name was Pancake. At last minute, I decided to turn her into a little boy because I had too many female characters. Also, I felt that more youthful characters were more innocent compared to all the characters. And I like cute things, so if it ain't cute or pretty, it does not cut it in my book. Pancake was paired up with a cat by the name of Mr. Mies, and that was his companion. The other characters that appeared were all complete garbage. I can't remember hardly any of them. Oh, I didn't know that Pancake had a special move called Pancake Surprise because he was a magical boy. That was his magical attack, so he would use a candy cane to blast so the attack his enemies. Pancake was created after my concepts of sailors. It looks like I merged that with another concept. Or something more different, something that hadn't been done. So I did a quick casting call and put the game together, and here's how it turned out. It's been a year since I last saw him. To think that I was deserted by someone so close to me. I was all alone in the world, until he saved my life. Now that he's gone, there is no one to comfort me or guide me. I had overheard him speak of how my family had perished in a blazing castle. My heart just shattered, to think how stupid I was. I just didn't understand what went on behind my back, until now. To think I'm the only person left in the family bloodline. My poor sister. She would always pick flowers from the castle garden and sing to me. Maple, red. Why couldn't I do something to save them all? I currently live with a woman by the name of Cretinia. She has adopted me. I miss my real parents. Although, to be honest, I don't remember much about them. My real mother died when I was a baby. 
and my real father died a few years back. Everyone in my life seems to disappear. Pan, stop daydreaming. You were late for school. You must hurry now or you'll be late. I don't want to go. The other kids make fun of me. Just ignore them. Now hurry along or you won't get any supper. Early poems evolved from folk songs dating back to ancient times. Poetry uses forms and conventions to suggest differential interpretations to words or to invoke emotive responses. Does baby want his bottle? I'm not a baby! You're a wimp. No one cool. Now I'm really mad. I'm gonna beat you up after class. Pan, you've caused quite the commotion. This has been going on for quite some time now. You have constantly disrupted my lessons. I have no choice but to ban you from attending class. You will have to explain everything to your mother when you return home. Where do you think you're going? Home? Where do you think? I'm gonna flatten you like a pancake. Because some people actually like the game, so I said, why not continue creating this concept? If my brother doesn't get the help he needs, if only father hadn't passed away when he did. Original actress trying it out did not want to reprise her roles. I assume that she did not like any of my creations. Had I been a better animator or artist, people would have probably cared to me more. As you can see, artists are an amazing lovely with very little experience are a little looked down upon trying to lay her apologies. I truly awaited on her at one point. I did not want to force her to do what she did not want to do, but I want someone to tell me. Someone later told me that trying to become a successful voice actress, good for her. And she also started voice in hentai related products. He has her in fandom and does a lot of imitations of characters from Pokemon. I continued with the FPG sequel reboot and this is how it turned out. Pancake was turning 16 and I allowed him to be able to extend his magical abilities in battle and this is what the game looked like. A lot has happened since I became ruler of Azalea Castle. I now rule with an iron fist and everyone bows before me. But it's not like before, where I am nothing special. I'm a human being, and nothing more. 
It does not matter if I was born with a golden spoon in my mouth. I feel I have learned the error of my ways on the long road in which I have traveled. Today is my birthday. I wonder what presents I will bestow upon. Fresh air is soothing to the body, mind, and soul. <laughs> Min Min. Oh no, not again. Run! What are you looking at? M my pendant? Uh, thank you for finding it. I looked everywhere, but I just couldn't find it. Now, how on earth can I repay you? I know! I'll join your party! I wanted to promote these Asian characters, of course, Ging had to be half Asian or she just wouldn't make sense why Lin was definitely Chinese. I would throw many concepts and eventually find what I was looking for. They were the opposite of Betty Boop and Michelle Girls. Here is a demo of what I was going for. Gigi, you have to listen to me. In a minute, Rem. I'm a little busy at the moment. But it's urgent. Okay. Okay, what is it? I'm... leaving the country to return to China. Well, have a nice trip. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Well, I guess this is goodbye. Bye. Wait. Please don't leave. Without you, I don't know what I'd do. Oh, Gigi. Like Ethel Merman once said, there's no business like show business. Now get into your costume. We have a show to pursue. All right, sister. Let, Let the, the show, show begin. begin. I decided to make Lemon be sexual because it added more to the story. She became a wacky, insane character. I was a one cherry blanket character from Strangers with Candy as reference. And that is why Lemon became the way she did. So instead of a male figure lesson, I had Lemon take on that role. And she was really abrasive to the point of where it became sickening. I later was pushing for a reboot of Prince Pancake, as I had us to be a gamer. It was inspired by Jean Dark. The prince in Jean Dark inspired me to develop my character. I also decided to make my character into a brat. Terrific one. And a new one, please. No more of your tales about father when he was still alive. I want a real adventure this time. 
Very well, Your Grace. I was walking on another character called me around the same time and I somehow merged Pancake and Mind and Owen, only they were different. Pancake was more prissy and regal and Mind was a bad way. I also say why don't I incorporate my character's Jajun Lemon into the game? It turned out to be a big mistake and I later came to realization that I could not write to save my life. I knew I was good at gossip base writing a fact check and then, but I was terrible at story writing. A lot of people, genuine reviewers did call me out on this many times and I just passed them off as haters. But I later came to realization on my own terms. It's always best to listen to yourself rather than the haters. Haters love to bring others down. They love to see the downfall of others. That is what I noticed. But these same people will support the most crazy when it's known to men. Make that make sense. You cannot, can you? I debuted my work very early and accidentally showed my concept art. The creators of the Count Lucan or of Wendy Gang were in the same circle as me. And they saw my concept, so they decided to steal the idea I created for my poster. And not long after Nino Kunai a Revenant came to my band, they decided to copy. And suddenly these male characters started looking very feminine. The creators of the Count Lucan will later change their box art for later releases. Because they knew they had copied me, it's not the fact that I cared. It was more to do with, get your own idea maybe. The creators of Bendy and the Dimension saw my JG creation many years ago. And it looks like they stole that for a lace and go. And they merged it with Betty Boop. I ran the Betty Boop fan page. So I never thought that people would see my work. I was recently told that someone by the name of a friend in 360 had copied my character JG and called his gang nuts. And he literally conned my whole bullet. I had Lady given JG a bullet collar. And it was purple. These individuals on social media have no creative desire to create their own content. Instead, they will copy. And like I said, it does not matter. And I will still call it out. Here is Pancake Surprise, better known as Flash. It became a story instead, and it is read like a book. The voice actress was miserable with Anadachi, and she was someone. But a talented actress who had been doing voiceover since the early 2000s. Pancake surprise! Extras! Extras! Hi there, darling. This is the extra menu. You can view content here featuring moi. Um, you mean us, right, Gigi? Have fun! Don't forget to use the spacebar to navigate through the gallery! <laughs> The world gallery. of today. Gallery. Gallery. You are driving me crazy. Gallery. 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 Surprise, created by Barry Mellon, art by Elinx and Reshka Takagami, music by Tim Beak, featuring the vocal talent of Rina Dachi. Any resemblance to real people and or events is purely coincidental. Pancake Surprise, off game. Credits. Extras, stock game. Oh no. My sweet kitty, please, wake up, <laughs> whatever shall I do, you were my everything, I will never forget you, Mr. Muse. <laughs> Once upon a time there was a beautiful castle which lay in Azalea. Azalea Castle was ruled by the mystical Pancake Prince, who had inherited the castle from his descendants. Azalea was 12 years old and was surrounded by the sea, 
forest and lush mountains. The people who lived in the village lived in peace and harmony. Inside the castle, there lived a shy, tender girl who worked under the prince. Now this girl was no ordinary girl. This was a girl with an extraordinary talent. <sighs> morning! The sun always beams so brightly in the morning. Mira opened her eyes and mumbled with a sleepy yawn. She got out of bed involuntarily, dragging the bed covers with her. I wonder what the Pancake Prince has in store for me today. As her brain cleared, she headed at an increasing speed for the door. Opening the door hurriedly, she sped through and she was brought to an abrupt halt. Mira was warned by one of the guards to be wary of the prince. Mira hesitated a little, but quickly made her way to Prince Pancake's room. She saw that the door was unlocked and decided to take a closer look. While cleaning, Mira saw a letter on the floor and decided to read it. Since the death of my beloved cat, Mr. Muse, I wander the forest daily in hope of salvation. If there is a god, why does he allow this pain I feel within my heart? Since Mr. Muse died, I am all alone in the world, but still I have faith deep within and will never give up hope. Mr. Muse? No wonder the prince has been so distant lately. Mira, you are up very early. I like to see that in a servant, but I seldom agree with snooping. In future, please knock before you enter my private bedroom. The prince told Mira that he was happy with all the hard work that she had put into her job and handed her a gift. The gift given to her was a beautiful black dress made of silk. You shall and will wear it with great pride. Now if you don't mind, I have a personal matter to attend to. Mira went to go clean the bathroom, but the door was locked. When she put her hand to the door, she overheard two maids talking. The maids were unhappy that Mira was being praised for her work. The maids were Lani, who sported a thick purple afro, who was a cook who cooked the meals, and Miko, who was lower on the scale than Mira, often had to clean the toilets much to her dismay. Lani warned Miko about Princess Zen who had been dubbed the Princess of Death. Zen was an evil spirit who was banished from Azalea, and she roamed the outskirts of Azalea. She would feed off of the fear and sadness that the people had deep within their very souls. Princess Zen? She sounds scary and really dangerous. Mira decided to inform the prince about the evil Princess Zen. But first, she decided to change into her new dress. Mira told the prince that the castle was in great danger. She warned him that a dark curse plaguing the land was drawing near. It must be Princess Zen of Ozal. She is the only one who could be so wicked and cruel. Zen of Ozal hates the Azalean royal family with a passion. Zen was banished a long time ago. Her power has no effect here in Azalea. But she has magical powers and most recently has targeted many innocent people. Mira, you know not of which you speak. Is thou so downcast? I heard Lonnie and Miko say that Zen still roams the outskirts of Azalea. We have to do something before it is too late. What do they know? They are but mere peasants. Tis I who keep Azalea safe from harm. Mira, you have disappointed me. Not only did you read my letter, you've used your high status in the kingdom to bring me nothing but dismay. I cannot accept this kind of behavior. Get out of my sight! The angered prince snapped and banished Mira. Mira left with her tail between her legs while sobbing silently. I'm ever so sorry, Mira, but you have become a little too outspoken for my liking. Mira was all alone and let her emotions run wild. She cried her eyes out. She knew that she had deeply upset him. While banished, Mira kept her room clean and read novels in her spare time. Once Mira was free from her banishment, a soldier warned her that the prince had been a lot of trouble and had locked himself away. 
Mira decided then and there that she was no longer going to let the prince have an emotional hold over her. The prince can vanish into thin air for all I care. He's a pest. I... I... I hate him. After all, a job was just a job. Little did Mira know that she was being watched. Several months had passed and the prince had segregated himself from everyone, as the prince now thought that there were very few people as trustworthy or as careful as he. I cannot trust any of them. They are leeches. I'm happy all by myself. I am the eternal ruler of Azalea. <laughs> that is what you think, my bittersweet prince. It's unfortunate that you are to soon meet your maker. Who is there? Is that you, Mira Saffron? I banish you and you still dare speak to me in that manner. I'll have your head. Suddenly, the aura in the room changed. A purple mist covered the throne room. W w what on Azalea's going on? Have I perished? Not yet, my dear. But you soon will be when I'm finished with you. You were but a coward, hiding behind this uncouth dreaded mist. Show yourself! Tis I, Princess Zen of Ozal. The Triangle and the Pyramid will lead you to your doom. <laughs> Zen smiled with the exquisite enjoyment of her environment. Her ill-lit stance scared the prince half to death. Her red eyes glanced towards him. Zen was the last Ozalian who had destroyed Ozel. Prince Pancake decided he would challenge Zen. What brings you here in Azalea? Answer me, you foul, demented demon. Well, my dear prince, as you can clearly see, you are... how you say... Thriving in sadness, fear, and depression. I have come to claim your very soul. You are a brat and need to be eliminated, not only for the good of your kingdom, but also for me. And it is all thanks to Mira Saffron. The hate she felt for you summoned me. It gave me the power I needed to get through the magical barrier surrounding Azalea. I would have never guessed that she would have been the key to your destruction. Zen tried every trick in the book so that she could devour the prince into the darkness. Mira, she would never... Oh, who am I fooling? After the way I treated her and everyone in the castle... Everyone you ever loved will be dead once I am through with you. Succumb to me! Prince Pancake warned Zen that she was a cold-blooded vixen. Zen, however, had no remorse for her actions. It seems the Azalean bloodline runs through you. If only you didn't have that magical aura around you. The prince caught on that it was Princess Zen, and figured it was she who had cursed him. Everyone in the world fears me. The fear only makes me grow even stronger. I bring death to all. Soon, my prince, you will no longer exist. You shall fall into an eternal slumber. After I am done with you, I will destroy the castle and devour everyone inside. Now, how does that destructive illumination spell go again? Aha! A calluminatius. A calluminatium. A calluminiosis. la Ma de do sa a de katame la ti do ra. I won't let you. Oh, holy light! I summon you. Pancake surprise! A Trinitarian power. It cannot be. No. Even if you finish me here. 
the curse. It will devour you. Wait. I can... No. I'm fading. No! The aura in the room turned back to normal. The prince fell to the floor. He had used up every last bit of energy on defeating Zen. Zen was defeated, but had left the prince cursed in her wake. Nobody had noticed that the prince had been left unconscious, as he had been selfish and had foolishly chosen to be left alone. Several days later, the pancake prince was found by some soldiers. It is all my fault, my prince. If only I hadn't wished for your demise. Mira, do not fret. You are not to blame. I was mean, selfish, and egotistical. I should have listened to you. Princess Sen was lurking in the darkness right under my very nose. My prince, my poor pancake prince, if only I had been more formal with you. I should have known my place in the kingdom. Do not fret. I feel at ease and shall soon be joining my family in eternal slumber. I have sacrificed my life for Azalea. Mira quickly left the room in great despair, with tears running down her eyes. The prince... he's... dead. Without the prince, Azalea will surely fall to ruin. The prince had sacrificed his life for his people by using his holy power. Zen was no more, but Mira still felt guilty. Suddenly, Mira felt a little dizzy and slowly fell to the floor. The soldiers attempted to revive her, but to no avail. Mira had died from a broken heart. Prince Pancake lives on in the hearts of his people. Mira, who served under him, faded into obscurity. Lemon, this is the kingdom of Azalea, where the Azaleans once roamed. Ew! Get your hand off me, Lemon, you perverted goonet! You don't have to be a butt wipe about it. It felt magical. Ginger. I... Uh, mean... Gigi. What do you think happened to them? Well, after the death of the prince, the next people to take over made some pretty stupid mistakes, and the rest is history. Kinda like Mr. Kim Jong-un. You know the grand pig of North Korea? You know the one... the one who wants to start a war? I guess the real world has a Princess Zen of its very own. It's only a matter of time. Those who abuse the power they have will meet the same fate as the Pancake Prince. Lemon, you just wouldn't believe what Nintendo did this year. You mean that chick that kinda looks like you? I hear she is a jazz singer now. Just like you and Betsy Bop. Who's that? Anyway... I'm a singer, dancer, and actress all rolled into one. You can try and imitate me, but can never duplicate me. In this world, I guess imitation is the highest form of flattery. Don't forget to check out the extra content on the main menu featuring us. She brought life to my characters, but the characters do not rest on her alone. They are my creations, and you can easily recast people into roles if you really need to, but the original voices are literally the best. Naponichi Software saw my prince pancake and suddenly debuted a blind prince. This prince looked awfully similar to my character. Not only that, but my creations have been made fun of indirectly in a Teen Titans episode. Mizzer is that used to voice characters with Kurobuckland, not 
Akira stole Mizuru's name, and that is why Kara is called Rainer today. She stole Mizuru's name, and Mizuru did not mind, but was more curious than a lice in Wonderland. Quick voiceover from what I heard, got married and settled down. Last I remember is that she said something along the line of her husband, not like a doing voiceover. That is how I perceived it. I just left misery to her life. A lot of people like that worked with hate in my list of Frank approach. But I personally do not trust anyone. After what had happened to me, especially with the whole dark sedation, if someone tells a stalker or stalkers to keep a distance and they know what you have to then be wary, I laid him off to pick a lot and started as an alternative freeware software. I didn't want to waste any money. I had a budget. And people were very fussy about how much, and I was like, seriously, it was still fun to sell ya. Yeah, that is how the industry works if you decide to work from the side of lines. When you hurt people, you have to be very careful. Some people cannot be trusted. With the pickles, I animated my own stuff, so I animated them with an alternative what software, it, and also some with her maker. Some of the animations oh, were real shoddy. Yeah, that was my mom. My mom's really bossy. What, you couldn't hear what she said? You must be tone deaf. Yes, I am animated. Cheap, huh? Very cheap. And yes, just to point out, I curl my eyebrows. Always have, always will. What's that, you ask? Will you see moi again? You'll have to wait and see. If I lose, I hope Justin doesn't spit on me. Time to dye that hair. He'd look better with blonde hair. You know, dark hair doesn't stand out in the crowd. I should know. After I dyed my hair for the first time, people began to notice me. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with black- What? No! I was rejected? He chose Selena What's-Her-Face over me? What's she got that I haven't? Chi-Chi was right. He's not interested in his fans sexually. One bit and never will be. I guess I finally woke up to reality. Ooh, snap! He ditched her too! You know, Selena, if you're looking for a good time, you don't need a man. How about the both of us grab a coffee? We're both somewhat virtual. I'm a pixel and you're a PNG file. Why don't we merge with one another if you catch my drift? So, me and virtual Selena went on a date, and now she's, well, dead. How'd she die, you ask? That's for me to know and for you to find out. And I'll never spill the beans on what went down on that hot, steamy night. But I'll let you in on one teeny weeny secret. After we did what we did, I erased her PNG butt from existence. And all I needed was an eraser. Who would have thought? Quite big-headed. You'd know all about having a big head. I can see why some women feel the way they do, with men trying to downsize them every second. No wonder most women have converted to being a feminist. Are you a feminist? No, but sometimes they make good points. In all honesty, I think they go a little too far. It reminds me of a cult, so to speak. But if that is what they feel they must do to get their word around, who am I to judge? But know this, Lemon. Stop. Please spare me. I wonder what happened to Betty Boop. Last time I saw her, she like totally snubbed me. Oh, her. Well, she went on to prosper. She was given a film contract which became null. A brand new TV series featuring her is set for 2018, and she is currently being featured in a brand new comic strip series. You hope she'll flop, right? I can't really say, to be sure. We'll have to wait and see if someone well past their sell-by date can make it in the modern world. So, um, Gigi, I would like to ask you, why are we gossiping in this week's episode, and not- Lemon. Why don't you finish up with a poem close to your heart? Hey, sister! My name is Lemon. In Japan, they call me Remon. Gigi thinks she's high pitch, but in reality, she's just a big bitch. Watch out, girl! I'm the new queen bee of this world! Bam! <laughs> Seems someone is way over their head. What's wrong? You wanted me to show off my skills, and so I did. That was not a poem. 
That was complete and utter. Okay, if you think you can do any better. Watch a professional at work. Once there was a girl who flew to the moon. Her name was Lemon. She was such a buffoon. She flew down to Earth like a rocket and blast, only to find that she had been stuck in the past. She screamed and screamed her echo uproar, only to find that she was quite a bore. That sucked. Sucky sucky sucked. Corny or what? My poem was way better. Lemon, how would you feel if I shoved my designer handbag down your throat, you uncouth heathen? Please, I beg of you, mercy. I, I, I didn't mean what I said. Honest. I don't know about Lemon, but I'll see you next time. Lemon, I was just kidding. What you said to me was quite rude. Yeah, says the chick with the acid tongue. And that was Gigi the personality girl and her personal vlog at work. Ta-ta for now. Wa needs to get her, how you say, groove on. D -d 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 that's all, folks! Lemon Lee, you ruined my- Your what? Your swag? Ouch! Gigi, that hurt! Like they always say, those who cannot be disciplined and continue to be foolish need to be taught the error of their ways by intensive force. I thought you were against violence. Yes, I'm against it. Mostly violence against children, women, and the elderly. But I have my limit. And you, my dear, have really upset me. <laughs> oh, grow up. Hope. She's okay. She fell in love with the couple she met abroad. But little did she know that they'd go on to adventure the world. Hopefully, not in 80 days. Well, at least she got what she always wanted. A man and a woman. man Don't worry. She'll be back. She just she is not here to see this. This is Gigi, singer of songs, dancer of dances, a triple threat. I'm a singer, dancer, and actress. All rolled into one. There is nobody in the world like me. 2011 to 2017. The world will go through many changes. For the better or worse. I'd bet my soul it would be for the worst. Here is a little word of advice from me to you. Be sure to button up your overcoat and take very good care of yourself. You don't belong to me. You belong to those who truly cherish you. Live life to the fullest, while most of you still can. Because when that day in question comes, it's game over! Lemon, we need to rehearse our script for the film short. Stop! Okay... What was the first line? Oh, yeah... One day someone in shining armor will sweep me off my feet. Lemon, don't push your luck. You know what your problem is, Gigi? Yeah, what? You lack... That guy standing way over there is so handsome! No! Not you! We're kind of rehearsing our script here, or at least trying to. Hi! I'm Lemon the Action Girl, and that's my background singer, Gigi the Vintage Girl. Step aside, foolish one. You really think you stand a chance? Is she jacking my swag? Gigi, you think you can have anything you want? Well, you can't! Not this time! Look what you've done! Your ditzy nature scared him away! And I almost had him in my clutches. That's not the only place you'd have him. What are you trying to say, perverted one? I saw him first. And besides, you don't even like men. Not to mention that you don't even know him. How dare you! I could always get to know him. I don't mind men one bit. Besides, I'm getting sick of picking up random girls in my automobile. Last time I accidentally ran over several of them at the red light district. They didn't see it coming, and neither did I. So much blood on my tires. I'll never forget that very day. The next day I woke up in a garbage pail. But that's another story. Typical for someone as trashy as you. Hey, that's not very nice. Well, you do make your own clothes. You weren't complaining when I did your hair. I had no choice. 
Well, you do look a little younger with ponytails. A little? You know everyone ages, Lemon. I guess. But I'd lay off the thick clown makeup. If you keep that up, you'll need thick clown makeup when I'm through with you. Lemon, let us play a little game. Make the, make the, make the, make the, make the, we'll win our little spat. Deal! Oh, Gigi, you are so mean and evil. You'd make a great witch. Hmm. So I've been told. If I win, you must cater to my every need. Don't I already do that? Naturally. I don't really want anything, really. I think we should... <laughs> Cut! Lemon, you screwed up your line! My bad. To be honest, I'm not really feeling the script. It totally sucks, but... Who the hell wrote it? They need to get their head checked out. I wrote it. Uh, I... I take back what I just said. What happened to the color? There, that's better. Gigi, this feels like... Deja vu? She was whacked out on pills. Where's Pill Cosby when you need him? Lemon, my mother does live here, you know. Well, it could be worse. It could be your typical internet stalker. What do you mean by that? You know, the kind. The kind that just won't get a clue. They're just there, like watching your each and every move. And then they turn into a bad smell you just can't get rid of. Talk about creepy. So, Lemon, when were you thinking of getting the hell out of my humble abode? Hey, Mrs. P, when we're finished doing what we're doing... And what, may I ask, are you doing? Rehearsing our scripts for our show. Tick-tock, tick-tock, time is a-ticking. Mother, we're busy. This is very important to me. If you say so, dear, just remember... Mother always knows best. That's what you think. Leave us alone, old lady. What's that you say? Old lady? Eek! How'd you hear that? For an old lady, I sure have great hearing. You'll be old one day. And when you do, you won't look nearly as lavish as I. Lavish? As in am lavish? I wouldn't want to look lavish. Lavish as in looking like a corpse. <laughs> How hilarious! <laughs> I never. If you need me, Gigi, I'll be in my room. Remember, Mother, no drinking. I had to throw away several bottles of pills this morning. Just to note, lavish means generous, something your mother isn't. Wow, you seem to be a little smarter than usual. I'm not stupid, you know, Gigi. I can be silly at times, but there's more to me than just wham bam, thank you, ma'am. Why can't you just get along with my mother, Lemon? Gigi, I shouldn't have to explain to you how much your mother hates me. It'd be like Seth MacFarlane trying to explain how he's a closeted homosexual. I guess that explains the show tunes that often warble out of his trap. Isn't he one of those puppets? Or was he... So, so, so... And the job will soon be done. Dresses, dresses everywhere. Up and down, who knows where. Calm down. I hate having to mother you. We should be equal to one another. Whee! I guess she's not listening. Lemon, you are supposed to present the show to the audience. So get busy. Hi, everyone. I welcome you one and all. 
female. I feel I must succeed at just about everything. I'm a good cook, I love sports, and I just love creating my own clothes. In my own right, I am a fashion designer with my own sense of style. Or a mental patient. Now I would like to show off my finished pieces of work to each and every one of you. First up is the little ensemble Gigi would consider chic. The basic little black satin dress. The kind of dress that light up any party. Next up is the green shimmer design. If you wore this in a field of green, green grass, you'd probably blend in. Next is a Barbie dream dress dubbed the glossy pink. In this dress, you can strut your stuff. You go, girl! Last but not least, my final design, the Lemon S. Now this gown is very special to me. I put my soul into making it. All you need to do to make the dress a hit is add your invisible guitar. Ba-dung, ba-dung, ba-dung. Or was it plink, plink, plink? Oh, wait. Plinking is a sound effect used for something else. Wearing this dress, you'll feel just like a goddess. I way to learn that is hard to animate pixels. Also, did a new musical sequence for the neutron big win. The original had butted up yellow overcoat, so the new one had all my dare instead. All my dare was just a party of oh you kid from a 1946 film. Jay just saying the word queer in the song, which means that she's indirectly singing about love. And here are some of the animations featuring JJ. My and Lemon. I hope you enjoyed my performance. If you'd like to see more of me, you can catch me live at my burlesque theater. Just look out for the sign that says Gigi and Lemon. I would also like to thank you for attending Lemon's fashion show. The poor dear put her heart into making those cheap... I mean those fabulous dresses. If anyone wishes to own a dress just like the dresses shown in our showcase, give Lemon a call. Oh my dear, everything's so queer. My mind is going ding-a-ling, hear my sing-a-ling. Oh my dear, everything is queer. My mind is going ding, so hear my sing. I've been told around these parts that I've broke a lot of sweeties' hearts. I've been told that when I wink, that your beautiful cheeks get pink. I was told when you cry, you make all those sweeties sigh. I was told from the start, so I guess I ain't that smart. But oh my dear, everything's so queer. My mind is going ding a ling. Hear my sing a ling. Oh my dear, may I lend you an ear? I said I'd never try again, but oh. I said I'd never try again, but oh my dear! I also worked on a pickle comic series. The last visual novel I created was Stardime as featured Lemon in the leading role in JG's cause in mind. I wanted to expand on their love-hate relationship. The story with Lemon is that all of JG's family have a dislike for Lemon. They begin to embrace her near to the end, and this is how story time turned out. Because of my dark humor and my comedy, my creations never become a hit. I received some fan mail here and there, and I obviously inspired many people along the way. Was I inspired? Of course, there are people who do not like to give credit for copying my ideas. But if I was in their shoes, would I do the same? Probably not. Mint? Time with Lemon! Hi 
everybody. It's me, Lemon the Action Girl. Er, uh, Lemon, who are you talking to? I don't know. Just imagine being stuck here with you of all people. Remember what my cousin told you. Lemon take very Lemon good take care of men. He is a new part of the he family. Of the he family. Me and my parents will be back tomorrow we'll night to take him home. Well? I, uh, forgot what she said. I just remembered in my brain, but I forgot again. Dimwit. Hey, my house, my rules. Anyway, I'm only taking care of you as a favor to Gigi. If only Gigi were here. <laughs> oh, Gigi. I'm sexy. You are sexy. We're all sexy. You know she's not here, right? I'm bored. And you know what this means, right? Please don't act up, Mint. We've been through this before, and it only ends in tears. Me? Cry? You must be out of your mind. Not you. Me. I wonder what we should do before we hit the hay. Hay? Hey, hey, hey. I know. Let's tell stories. It'll be a lot of fun. There are just so many genres to choose from. Boy, am I excited. It had better be good. Rat. Shut it, slime breath. You'll never turn into a fine young woman acting like that. You are so weird. You know that? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. I thought you were a giant fly buzzing around my butt. Besides, Mint, this is my home. I can do what I wanna. Be who I wanna. Groove like I wanna. Say what I wanna. Like eeny meeny mecca recca ra ra dama necka. Chicken papa lolly papa um poom push. Okay, okay. You win. Just stop, please. And just as I was about to take out my fly swatter. This is worse than detention. Mint, please. Don't be like that. This is the last time you'll see me. You see, I'm leaving soon. Leaving? What do you mean? I'm going to go on an adventure, because I'm an action girl. I'm Lemon, the action girl. Okay, we get it. Have you told Gigi? I plan on telling her in my own time. So keep those cute little lips sealed tight. I'm sorry for the way I've treated you. Don't worry about it. You can't help it. It's in your blood to be rude and obnoxious. <laughs> B but what will I, uh, I do without? <laughs> oh, please don't cry. I'll still be around. And besides, didn't you say you hated me? Now turn that frown upside down. I know, we can take turns telling stories and poems. This is gonna be so much fun. Ah, uh, if you say so. You sure are hard to please. And to make sure we don't infringe on anyone, We'll make up our own stories. I want to go to bed. Now! Aw, Cranky. Let's get you to bed. No. Wait, I, I can stay up. Well past my bedtime. No. You had your dinner, you had your bath, and your story. Now it's bed. And that's final, Mint. <sighs> I'm a little on the tired side myself. A good night's rest will refresh us for whatever tomorrow brings. Now let's turn off the light and go to sleep. 
Good night and sweet dreams to all. Most people who are drama queens on social media who are desperate for my attention are oppressed individual with nothing better to do with their lives. They usually try to get my attention by stalking me or doing something where people who do that are trash. I don't even have to tell them they know they are trash. But to everyone else out there, if you have a creation and want to look after something inspired you, don't let the haters stop you from being creative. And to anyone out there who is a hater, just but, but what? Damn, but wipes always sticking there. Keeps dildo-shaped noses into people butts and business.